You know what? There's very few times when I hope that I'm wrong. Very few times. But in this instance, I absolutely hope. I, I pray that I'm wrong. But for some reason, I don't think that I am. Nope. Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. This is my review for Real Housewives of Potomac. This is season eight, episode two. And there's just something, I, it's, I'm late. I'm late bringing this to y'all because I kind of like walked around it for a minute because I needed to think about it. I really needed to think about it and what I was actually going to say because I didn't want to have to come back and retract it and all that kind of carrying on and find myself in a position. But this show, one of the things that I can't stand when it comes to reality TV is when it comes to reality TV with my melanated people, there's a dark cloud of colorism that is always looming and it's always forever present, okay? And I try to ignore it and I try to go around it and I try to move about and, and I don't really be wanting to talk about it and all of that. I mean, it's bad enough that we get all of the, oh, this is trash TV and those black women tearing up other black women. But when it breaks down to the whole colorism thing, it just even gets more intense. And then you're being accused of being colorist if you like a person and they're light because I'm dark and how do I get dragged? It, it, it's crazy. But sometimes you can't even escape it. Sometimes it's just there and there's nothing that you can actually do about it but talk about it and it just be what it be. Now, I've not had a whole bunch of conversations about colorism when it comes to Housewife Potomac, but it's there. The conversation exists. The conversation's been going on. I just don't indulge. I really don't indulge in it. But most of the women in this series are of a more fair skin. And we got Wendy, who is dark skin like myself. Um, she's actually, she's Nigerian. So what I saw here, I said today, okay, so we, I seen her last episode. So we got a new person, Nenika. We got her, okay. And I said, oh, all right. I seen her. And then I seen her this episode. Whenever y'all get into it with Wendy, the colorism talk starts. Last year, when there was all that stuff with Wendy and Mia, there was a whole lot of colorism talk. You know, because Mia just carried on terrible and 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 you know, you had the side. It was a mess. It was a mess. But now here's Nenika. And Nenika is Nigerian as well. And I can't help but ask, did y'all bring Nenika to be able to go after Wendy with no repercussion because she brown skin too? Is that what happened? And it's so interesting that she came down here with Ashley, who always has problems with brown skin Candace. And then there's always that little thing about colorism looming around. So now we got brown skin Nenica to go after brown skin Wendy. And y'all think anybody gonna say nothing. Now, as I said, when I first started, I absolutely hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. But I see you, Ashley. She's a bit too manipulative for me. Ashley gets on my nerves. Everything's so calculated. Everything so shady. We won't talk about it though. But I just, I just want to start right there. And I didn't gave it five minutes, and that's enough. That's enough. Right now, 
And like I said at the top of this, I absolutely hope I'm wrong. I don't think I am, though. Let's do this. Ashley. Ashley and her mama down there shopping. She got the house and all of that. Her and her mother's sitting there talking. Um, it's still, she hasn't gotten divorced. His name, um, her name, the house is in her name. He's still on the mortgage and whatever, whatnot. Same old stuff. I ain't going to work myself up with that. She's comfortable doing what she's doing. End of story, really. I mean, who cares? Get it done. However you get it done, get it done. When you take up as a young girl and you are the uh, sugar baby to an old prune, you should get what it is that you should get. Yes, you should be taken care of. And you not only were married to old prune, you had two children by the old prune. So look, get it how you live. Get money, bitch. Uh, it, it is what it is. But I'm not going to waste my time week to week to week talking about it because it ain't important. He should be paying for stuff. It is what it is. He bought what he bought. And you were for sale. Yeah, I said it. Period. Now, they talked about the whole Michael suing Candace thing. Now, he's supposed to be suing Candace. Ashley says she don't know nothing. I ain't in it. I ain't in it. Okay. We'll see as we move forward. See, again, I ain't spending a whole bunch of time on this. When we move forward in the program and Candace is in scenes and you and Candace fight like y'all always fight, we'll find out whether or not you know something about it because, you know, you don't know how to shut up either. You don't know how to shut up either. And when you get mad, you'll tell it. But that's okay. We'll talk about it then. Moving on. Karen and Mia get together. Karen, that wig is horrible. Horrible. That child, that ain't, that was a literal somebody that was in hair school for two weeks made that wig and said, yes, baby, I have done it. This is a masterpiece. And you put it on your head and that's look like what it looked like, honey. Like you had actually had a piece on your head and was into it with a master of jujitsu, honey. And they done tore your ass up, honey. And this is how your hair came out. That wig is horrible. And the wind blowed around. Horrible. Horrible, horrible, horrible. And I'm going to tell you which other one is, is horrible. This look for this confessional. Come on, Grand Dom. We, we, we got to do better. We got to do because you're slipping back into your old ways. Don't do it. Don't do it. Do not do it. But that old. I want to dance with somebody. That wig in your confessionals, girl, every time you pop up for a confessional, honey, I'll be like, I want to feel the heat with somebody. It's horrible. Somebody. <laughs> I hate that. I hate that wig. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I hate it. I hate it so much. That wig is the worst, honey. I'm telling you. And I'm really not lying. Every time she come on screen, <laughs> I do. I turn around and there's somebody who... <laughs> I hate that wig. That wig is the worst. It's terrible. And here's the thing. It's one of those styles that you... I think maybe you think that it makes you look younger, but it doesn't. It looks, makes you look dated. It's given, I want to dance with somebody. It's given grease. Because ain't that Olivia Newton-John's hair on grease? Take a look at it. It really is. It's ugly. I don't like it. And it dates you. It just doesn't look, it's not fresh. It's not anything. It looks old, dated. It looks ratted and tatted. It just is not, it's not a good look. The color, everything, everything about it. It says throw the whole bitch away. I don't like it at all. Anyway, so we got Karen down here. She's talking with Mia. They're basically getting through what where they went wrong 
Well, where Mia went wrong, because Mia was lying on Karen. You know, she painted a picture of Karen to be some type of tramp. And when she did it, she didn't take Karen's husband or her family. Remember, Karen has grown children. So her children can see this stuff and you're painting this picture. And like Karen said, don't bring rumors and lies where my family can get where it'll affect my family. Just don't do that. It was disrespectful to my husband. You know, you and I battle whatever. But you basically disrespect my husband. And that's not something that I would have done to you. There were plenty of things that I could have said that would have dragged you. But I didn't go to those because I didn't want to hurt G. And, you know, Gordon is always around as well. And, you know, Gordon's feelings are soft. Gordon would have been mad. So I've never done that. So I'm asking you, don't do that. Don't do lies and rumors that will hurt my union. I think that much of you think that much of me. I don't think that's too much to ask. I really don't. Not if we're going to be friends, but I mean, now, bitch, if we get ready to battle and we're just going to be battling, then it is what it is. Let's get it. But if we're going to try to have some decorum, yeah, don't do things that will sting my family members. Like, don't do not do that. Don't do that. Now, this child's running around talking about she ain't drinking liquor no more. Now, she told that lie a few times. You know, I don't think it really bothered me all that much because... Mia is a liar. That's what we know her to be. We know Mia to be a liar. She lies. That's what she does. You know, I think her tongue burns if she don't tell no lie. So this whole thing of I'm not drinking liquor anymore. Oh, but I'm drinking wine. See, because you can buy that in the in the, the grocery store. Who cares where you can buy it? Don't it still get you high? Don't it still get you high? If you drink enough wine from the grocery store, won't you still get a DUI? So cut the bullshit, man. Knock it off. You still drinking. Then you went and you start putting on some of what what went on last year on, I was, well, I was taking medication and we're like, mm -hmm, just like you had cancer, right? Well, did you really have cancer? Yeah. So what, what medication was you taking? Because you didn't have cancer, and that was all a lie. So what medication were you taking that you mixed with liquor that made you act up in the way that you did, calling Karen a tramp and throwing drinks on Wendy? Because this is what you're saying. It's the pills and the liquor. I personally don't feel like you were taking any pills. And if you were, they were recreational. So were you, are you telling us something? I don't believe you. I think you were just acting an ass and you were carrying on for the camera and Wendy was your victim, Karen was your victim, and so was your uh, foster sister. That's just the way it is. So just say, I wanna do better. We don't need all these extra lies. This is me a lie, honey, we don't need all that. Moving right along. Candace met up with Nye who is her manager or whatever. Candace. Girl, is that a card table? Why do you have a card table inside of your house on the main floor? Talking about this is your office or whatever. And that, it's a fold-up card table. Kind of hard to be walking around with your nose up in the air like you do with a card table as your desk for your office. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, just said, girl, that table make me want to drive back, honey. You girl, get on out of here. And then what was that whole shade about Drew Sedora? What was that? What was that? That was just full on nastiness. We just got done watching Real Housewives of Atlanta and Drew Sedora threw you this bone. Remember, Real Housewives of that never forget. Never forget. And y'all can type this in the chat. Hashtag never forget. Uh, Real Housewives of Atlanta is the big show. 
then y'all come. No matter what the, the ratings are doing at this time, yeah, they're losing some, some ratings and different things like that. But never forget, Real Housewives of Atlanta is the mother show. Then you. Drew Sedora bringing your project and her guest starring with you at the City Winery helped you. Did Drew Sedora really need your help? Drew Sedora is sitting on the television show with Candy Burris. So when it comes to music and things of that nature, Drew Sedora could have cleaned her act up and sat next to Candy and got something popped off. Would have been, I'm, I swear I'd put money on it, more beneficial then coming to the city winery and messing with you over there on the younger sister show when she's already on the mother show. So for her to put you in this good light and push your project forward and then you to sit on your show and now shade her was ridiculous to me. And it is these things, Miss Candace, why you always are in the shit that you are in because you are shady. Little Miss Ma'am, your ass is shady. Now, I'm gonna tell you what should happen to you. And if this happens, Drew Sedora, I want my check. You understand? Just send it to, send it to my PO box, sis. I want my check. Drew Sedora should take you and wrap her hands around that wig you got on that's too far back on your on your forehead and drag you and make you part of her storyline over on the mother show. See, because the mother show needs some new ratings anyway. That little scene you did, Drew Sedora should reach down from the mother show and drag you up onto the porch and you be a part of her storyline. That's what should happen. Y'all wanna merge some shows together? Come here. That's exactly what should happen to you because of that scene. Just that little scene, that's all it take. That's all it take. Y'all wanna really make a storyline? And I'm always open. Bravo, Andy. If you need me to write it, I'll gladly write the storyline for you. You can send my check to my P.O. box. I'd be happy to. We merge these things right on together. And it just is nice and nasty. Remember I said it. Anyway, November 2023. Miss Thing, I would drag you unmercifully if I was Drew Sador. Moving right along. And then I'm going to leave it with, girl, I can't get, you spent six figures on your tour and you got a card table as a desk. I, 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 I seen what you got going on and I don't believe that you hustling backwards, but do better with that. Don't you come back on here no more with no card table for nothing on the show. Just knock it off. Moving on. Robin and Juan. Here's another one that I'm not going to waste a whole lot of time with. He don't care. He don't care. He doesn't care. And what I see with Robin and Juan is Robin, you'll continue to be Robin. This is, the, I don't know why people are in such a funk about this. Robin has played the fool for Juan ever since we met them. This is no different. It's just on a larger scale. She's still playing the fool for that man. See, the heart wants what the heart wants. Robin loves Juan Dixon. He, he does. She does. She loves Juan Dixon. That ain't for us. That's between Robin and Robin's heart. Because that's all that's in it. Juan don't give a damn. He keeps on. He even speaks it in words. I don't care. I don't care. How long do you think? You know I'm always evil, bitch. Do you think that I'd be dealing with that? Who I'm saying, you know, I'm going through this and I'm going through that. And people are dragging me and this is social media dragging me. My friend groups are dragging me. My family members looking at me like I'm crazy. And you keep saying, all you got to offer me is 
I don't care. And I might love you, nigga, but I don't care. Why am I in it by myself? Why am I being dragged by myself? Ain't that what a couple is about? We get dragged together. You lay on top of me and you cover me and you shield me from some of the blows and the hits of the dragging. Not do you lay on top of me and cover me whenever you feel like sweating on top of me and that's it. No, no. When it comes time for old nasty piece of dragon, you lay on top of me and you cover me and you shield me from some of the blows that come. But see, I don't see that from Warren. It's more Robin. You always on top. That's another subject for another time. I'm going to walk on away from this one now because I don't want to get too inappropriate. I'm going to move around move around this and let's move it along. But mm -mm, them two ain't going to wear me out with this. Robin's in this alone and warned and told y'all, I don't care. That's it. That's it. That's all. Period. He run around. He's using this time to plead his innocence with that stuff with the school and the and the lawsuit, period. That's all. And I think if it wasn't for that, he might not would even do his scenes. Moving along. Okay, Nenica. Nenica and Akina. Okay, her and her husband. Nenica is a, a lawyer. Akina is a doctor and a nightclub owner. Ciao. A doctor and a nightclub owner. I said, listen, me got 900 jobs, honey. Go on with yourself. I ain't mad. Get to the money. Get money. Um, nothing about her really is interesting. Nothing. Nothing. She not. Um, get, it's, nothing about her is interesting to me at this point. I'm just looking at her and she's just there. And I'm like, okay. She's not stunningly beautiful to where it stops me in my tracks. She is nothing. I mean, she's just very arrogant, but that's it. I mean, that's normal. No, no big deal. So is Wendy. But there's some things about like Wendy Sharp. And Wendy got other things going on. Wendy's husband, we like Wendy's husband. Now I can uh, Ikeena is, is he, he seems to be likable because he seems more down to earth, you know, more down. Earth. Anybody who's functioning on two pieces of the scope, like you're a doctor over here and you're a bar owner over there, there's something about you that's definitely interesting. He probably should have the peach. He should have the peach because he's more interesting. I, no, nothing about her. And then she sat down to a day she wants to have kids. And I said, what is all this planning for kids? Do people not just lay down and screw their partner? And when you get pregnant, you get pregnant? Because this isn't everything in God's time. When God says yes, nobody can say no. When God opens the door, nobody can close the door. That's it. When he's ready is what it will happen. What is all of this? I mean, these are young people. They're young people. You get married and you just do what married people do. Jump up and down on each other. And then one day, if God sees fit, you'll be pregnant. What is all this extra stuff? God don't need no help. He really don't. I mean, I get it, but that's just, and this is just me speaking. And some people will not agree with me Hell, you ain't got to agree with me. I'm gay, so I don't live this life anyway. I don't. But as far as I know of how things go, you just go and you get your brain. You fall in. It's how I go. Let, let's, let's go through what I know. Go through what I know about heterosexual. You meet the person. You say, oh, you get butterflies in your stomach. It's the same when we're gay. You get the little butterflies in your stomach. You be like, mm, child, I like him. And that's that. And then if he likes you back, then y'all end up connecting. And then somewhere down the line, he buys you a ring and he say, baby, I want to be with you for the rest of my life. It's the same with the gays. Okay. All of that part. Now, here's where it gets tricky. 
Once you get your ring, honey. Because, see, it don't mean a thing until you get your ring, honey. Same on both sides. So you get your ring, then you go down to the church, and girl, you put your, you get your most beautiful dress that you're ever going to have in your life. It's probably the most expensive dress that you're ever going to have in your whole life. And you get married to this guy, and it's the best day of your life. Same thing on the gay side. Same thing. Now, only difference, we might have two tuxes and we, somebody might have a dress. I mean, yeah, you know, you know, we always got to boot it up some. So it might, you know, but basically same thing. Big party, expensive outfit, everybody watching. You're the shit for the weekend. Same thing on both sides. This is when it's all heterosexual from here on out. Ain't no special preparation necessary. The day of the wedding, you start doing what it is that you've been waiting to do. You jump up and down on it, baby, and you sweat and you have a good time and you grin and, and, and all that. And you could do it as much as you want. And then one day when God sees fit, there is a mixture of the two of you in your belly. And that's just how it works. God don't need you to open up no window when he opened up the door. That's it. So all this other stuff, unless you have some type of a problem where you need some medical help to, to straighten some things up. And that's that's all, you know, that's a whole nother thing. But I didn't hear nothing about no medical issues or nothing. All I heard was you going to do God's work for him. And now you're going to start taking these prenatal vitamins and all this other stuff. But here you are, you so smart and you so prepared and you so in it, you got it going on so much that you taking prenatal, prenatal vitamins, but you're taking them with champagne. See, this is when the problem starts. When you going to tell God how far to open the door up. Since when did you take a vitamins with champagne? When do you take any type of supplement with alcohol? Well, you want a little drunk ass baby? Is that it? That sounds so crazy to me. Somebody's supposed to be so smart. Because later in this episode, didn't you drag Wendy slickly about her degree? I'm a lawyer. Um, oh, she's not a medical doctor. Neither are you, obviously. Because what do you want, ma'am? Like I said, prenatal vitamins and champagne. Which you want a drunk ass baby? Go sit down, Nenica. Go sit down. That was the first England I said. Why is she here, Ike? No pun intended, because her husband's name is Ike. But yeah, I'm talking to you right now. Why is she here, Ike? Moving right along. We get back into it. Move right along. Anyway, I know some of y'all ain't going to like that part of the video. I don't care. I did it. I did it. And it wasn't not one lie told. Fuck with it. Moving on. Go. I'm going to go on over to Wendy's house. Let's go over to Wendy's house. Wendy, girl, you throwing shit at the wall again. Now she's running around looking at studio space and all this. She great throw some more of her husband's money away. She wants to do her own talk show now. Wendy, baby, listen, I that's all I got. I ain't got no more for that. Girl, you throwing more of your husband's money at the wall. It, listen, if it pop off, that's cool. God knows you know how to hold a crowd and talk. I don't know about a talk show, though, because intellectual stuff, yes, but that ain't kind of what, just depends on what talk show you're going for. I don't think that that's the kind of talk show you're going for, though. But anyway, whatever. I definitely see you doing commentary. Talk show, that's a whole different thing. You so shady sometimes, Wendy. I can't even imagine you interviewing guests and looking down your nose at them. Girl, you'll be off before the second week of the season. Let's let's move on. I, that's all. I, I, I ain't got no more for that. Moving on. Let's go on over here to old shady Ashley's old housewarming child. 
So, Mia, in the last episode, we already talked about how you had to downsize. You're the downsize. So basically, you're living in a space right now where your whole living quarters is Ashley's garage. And didn't you walk your ass right to her house and still throw shade? You still threw shade at her house like it was just a quaint little cute little place. But yet, your living quarters is the garage. The nerve. You a mess. You ain't never going to change. Wendy showed up. And the funniest thing, maybe there was everybody standing there and Wendy went through and hugged who she wanted to hug, period. No hug for Mia, no hug for Giselle. I laughed my face off. And I'm like, damn, Mia, you just getting kicked out with the hugs all together because she was having such a hard time because Karen's like, Miss Thing, I'm not hugging you at all. You and I aren't there, honey. No hugs. She kept trying to hug Karen. Karen was like, mm mm. That was the day that they met up. It's like, no, girl, I'll give you a nasty piece of handshake. And then she carried it right on to that house woman. She went a handshake, honey. Back up. Back away from me, girl. I don't do you like that. Now, let me be shady for a second, Ashley. You got 22 closets up in that house with clothes in them. And the clothes that you wear don't cover much. And the things that are long and cover up stuff could be balled up. It ain't shit. It could be balled up and thrown in a drawer somewhere. All Everything looked like lingerie and club wear. 22 closets, and you mean to tell me that you done bought this house for all this money, and you got both your boys sharing a room, a little room. Your Each of your closets is bigger than their bedroom. This thing, get out of my face. Get all the way up out of my face. It just was ridiculous. And then you showed that to the public. I hope you didn't think what nobody going to say nothing. That's all you got is it just two bedroom, your bedroom and their bedroom. And then they got to be crunched up in a bedroom together. I say you take your ass to sleep on the couch, huh? Move it on or put yourself in one of them closets. But why they got to share a room? Ridiculous. Moving on. Me, 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 I guess. So the lying Fraggle, better known as Deborah, has come back to the show. Wendy seeing her and roll her eyes like, oh, really? I said, okay. Then we bring in Nenica. Nenica comes in and there was a whole thing about the the pronunciation of her her name. Listen, I'm going to give her this. The dress she had on was sharp. That was a really, really sharp dress. That dress was sharp. I liked it. I liked the dress. Yeah. Okay. Moving on. Wendy pulls Ashley, or Ashley pulls Wendy to the side, and she wants to sit down and talk to her. And all she was doing was buttering Wendy up for what is to come. Do you all hear me? Do you all hear me? Come closer, my loves. She was buttering Wendy Osefo up for what is to come. She just brought Nenica onto the show to come for Wendy's goddamn neck. Do you understand? I hope I'm wrong. But again, I've been doing this a very long time. I've been watching these shows longer than this show been on the air. She ain't doing nothing but butter and Wendy up to unleash Nenica on her. Do you understand? They sitting there trying to clear up the little whatever might be going on. That ain't nothing but to sit over here so I can say later, I didn't do that. Y'all know Ashley, but I didn't, I didn't, I had no idea that you all were going, I didn't do Wait a minute. I don't know. Shut up. Shut up. Slick ass. Say nothing but a setup. Anyway, Wendy told her, I just want to know that when the occasion arises, you won't stab me in the back. I said, oh, baby, the writing is on the wall. The writing is on the wall. Like Destiny's Child, baby. It's going to be jumping, jumping. Just hold on. 
Just hold on. Leave your man at home, honey. The club is full of ballers and pockets full grown, honey. Because that was one of the whole things about the whole thing about them talking about her husband and all that old shit. And that was that, you know, that was like you was doing too much. But girl, all that apologizing and all that, that ain't nothing but her buttering you up. She's going to do exactly that. The knife is already in your back. You just don't see the blood stain in your new dress. She already got you. Nenica's coming there for you, Wendy. Anyway, she says, I'm a lawyer. They're out there. They're saying, oh, yeah, Wendy, y'all from the same place, same tribe and all that old stuff. And Wendy ain't out there. And she's like, oh, yes. I'm met. Um, oh, she's not a medical doctor. See, I'm a lawyer. What is she? Oh, she's a doctor of philosophy. I said, oh, the shade. The shade. I said, here we go. Here we go. And then they said something about her family is Oshu. And we're going to find out more about that as we go forward. Nenica was leading this charge, telling her that her family is Oshu, which means they're basically like outcasts. It's something in the Nigerian culture. Listen, we're going to be watching so we can get more familiar with it. But all you need to know is it ain't nothing nice. It ain't nice. She wasn't saying, oh, they're just lovely people and everybody wants to be around them. She gave very much of, this is us, this is her family. That's what it was given. I said, oh, yeah, Miss Ashley, Miss Ashley. <sighs> Ashley's only talking to Wendy, I believe, just to make Wendy part of her storyline and to have her. I never knew. You know what I should do. Anyway, whatever. Whatever. Um, one last thing that I skipped. Karen had had this little piece. So I've been talking long enough. I got to go. Um, Karen had a little Pilates class. She had the girls come to. I said, child, what is all the... Gise and Giselle, that little young boy got you. You girl, you busted it open on camera and carrying on. I'm like, what's going on? It's all okay. Legs all parted, Karen. But they was doing this whole thing. I said, Karen, don't you dare. She led them in this conversation. Yes, you know, I'm going to be uh, three times 20. or She's going to be 60, child. She's trying to say it cute. Your old ass is going to be 60. And she's like, oh, you know, because I found out I got, she led us all down this road. Like there was some type of medical situation she was having. And she has to this, that thing, and the other. Child, I said, no, you ain't due to me a cancer thing, girl. Got us all worked up for nothing. Nothing. I got a 5% block. Girl, shut up, Eddie. I said, I want to punch Karen with a brick. I said, if you I mean, literally, she walked us down this path where we was thinking she was going to say something was really going on with her and we're going to get all worried. I said, no, she ain't pulling me on us real fast, honey. Well, thank God you didn't go through the whole season to have us all worried about you, but you tried it, Miss Karen. That damn grand dollar money. Anyway, listen, keep your eyes on Nenica. Keep your eyes on Ashley, because I think that they both are up to no good. And I think the target is our Wendy Osefo. I ain't here for it. I don't like it. And um, I hope I'm wrong. But until I figure out I'm wrong, I'll be dragging. Anyway, I'm out of here. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.